Hi guys, I'm Hannah and today we're going to be talking about YA mysteries. Now what qualifies as YA mystery? What differentiates them from adult mysteries or middle grade mysteries? So let's get started. Hi guys, I'm Hannah and today we're going to be talking about YA mysteries. A lot of people have asked me where they should start with a YA mystery and that's what I'm going to talk about today along with some of the characteristics of YA mysteries. So for a YA mystery, the protagonist is usually a teenager, young adult, that's why it's for YA and they're usually thrust into these mysterious circumstances. So they could be an amateur detective, they could just stumble upon a crime or a mystery and then get roped into solving it. There's a number of possibilities. And a good place to get started would be with Sue Warman. Now this embodies the teen voice very, very well and it's a nice place to start for way in mysteries just because these are super quick. I think it'd take you about a day, honestly, to finish and they're really easy reads. So shall I just give you a quick what these are about? Miss One dead popular, she's really popular, <laughs> obviously and it's in this set in this private school so if you like a private school setting that's very well done the setting in that and they live on the campus and someone had died and she's got to figure out what happened and it had a really good plot twist and in this one Sky is sent to a summer camp which deals with grief and bereavement so she's just lost her sister and then she suddenly starts getting these text messages from her sister on this private chat and she has to figure out how her dead sister can possibly sending these messages or who's doing it, who's behind it. But honestly, if you're gonna read one, read this one because this one's got an unsatisfying ending and you're just like, mm. you might like it, it might just be me. But it was still a good read. The only thing I would say about this is that I would say it's more targeted for the younger side of young adult, just because while the teen voice is very prominent and easy to read, I would say if you don't like a really teeny voice then it's probably not the best to start with. But anyway, during the course of this read you can guess what's happening, guess who did it, if it's a who did it, because mysteries don't always have to be murder mysteries even though that's one of my favourite kinds. Uh, they can just be a mystery with who's sending freshening messages, who's writing red on the walls, you know, there's, it's not always murder, which shows how wide this genre is because it encompasses quite a lot of different mysteries. Mystery itself, the word, actually means something difficult or almost impossible to solve. And that's one of the things that draws us into mysteries, because we want to do the impossible and we want to solve it. So the category as a whole is quite big. And now I'm going to go into another book, and this one I'm including purely because it is sort of different from other YA mysteries, so I'm just showing you how wide this category is. And that is a relatively new release, Good Girls Die First by Catherine Foxfield. Now this one, uh, it wasn't personally my cup of tea. The only reason that I really read it is because it's set in a carnival setting, and I don't know about you, but I have favourite settings. If a novel is set at a carnival, I automatically add it to my TBR. It's carnivals and circuses I've got a thing for, so I think that's probably inspired by the Night Circus, Caraval, The Starless Sea, Pandemonium. Uh, I just read that. That's on my blog. That was a really good one. She's a princess in that. I <laughs> hadn't read one with a princess main character for a while, so that was nice. But anyway, so the reason that this is different from other mysteries is because it has, it has a supernatural paranormal element to it. So the bad guy is this paranormal supernatural figure. And in my mysteries, I usually like it where I can figure out who done it. <laughs> And when it's a paranormal element, I struggle slightly because it's or something out of your control. And while there is links and connections between the characters, between the storylines, I just couldn't fully love this book because I wasn't into the paranormal. But saying that I did really like this other book, I can't tell you what it is because that's a spoiler because it doesn't seem paranormal until you hit the end. 
I think some of you will probably know what I'm on about, maybe you won't. It's a really famous one, but obviously some of you won't have read it, so I won't want to spoil it. If you do want to know, you can DM me on Instagram because I'll tell you the title. So anyway, this one is all set on a pier in an abandoned carnival. How awesome is that though? And there are 10 teenagers all linked together. They all know each other somehow. And I did actually quite like the characters in this. They weren't your typical likeable characters, but they were well done. I don't know if it's because I've, I've read a few books lately that don't really have well-rounded characters that are believable. I mean, even if a character isn't likeable, I still need it to be believable. So a lot of these characters in this you don't actually like, you're just like, hmm, okay, you were, you were not a nice person, <laughs> but you're still sort of rooting for some of them, so this might be a cup of tea even though it wasn't mine. So I would recommend it if you like paranormal in your mysteries. Okay, so I don't think I could do a YA mystery YouTube video without including this series. It is probably one of the biggest ones amongst the bookstagram bookish community and it has super pretty sprayed edges. So that is the series One of Us Is Lying by Karen McManus. Uh, that's the second one in it and then that's another series different from this one. Don't get confused and think this is one of these ones. But I do quite like the idea of an author having matching books, even if the series are different. It just appeals to my nature of everything being tidy. So another category of the YA mystery is where something happens to a bunch of characters. Something that the characters have to react to, they're given no other choice. So this is a really good series because it's a bit like a dark version of The Breakfast Club if you like that movie. Is the movie a book as well? I'm not sure, I haven't read it if it is. <laughs> but it's a very delightful murder mystery. <laughs> I don't know if you could say delightful murder but... So you have five teenagers in a room in detention. Bronwyn, Cooper, Nate, Addie and Simon. And then Simon suddenly dies. So then the four remaining are the suspects. So who did it? Do -do -do -do. It's actually a really good twist in this one. I was just like Okay. Okay. And each one of these characters has a secret that they don't want to get out, but that gets released on Simon's blog. So Simon, who's dead, is somehow still doing posts from beyond the grave, or someone's doing it in his name. So you've got to figure out all these different things that are happening. And if you do like all the characters, which is like, hmm, okay, that's, that's, <laughs> this, is, this makes a good book. I was, I was talking to my friend actually and she's like, what makes a good book? And she said, would you prefer a good book being something with a strong characters or a strong plotline or strong world building? And out of those three categories, I'd say characters because a character can move a plot along. So I'd say characters, plot, world building. And I only say world building last if it's not a fantasy because if a fantasy has bad world building, it's... <laughs> Not you can't exactly like it that much. So, but if it's a murder mystery and you're like set in London, then you already have a firm grasp of what London's like in your head. So you don't really need as much of the world building in this scenario. And then the second one in this is One of Us Is Next, and this is with the siblings from One of Us Is Lying. It's, so it's nice to see things happening to the siblings of one of us is lying characters so it, it's a nice link between so a lot of bad stuff happens at Bayview High I don't know how it hasn't been closed down to be perfectly honest in this book there is a copycat and that's another category of YA mysteries you have the copycat mysteries and copycat mysteries are really good because obviously you know what to expect because they're copying a past crime and, and then there's always some sort of twists as well which make the book uh, unique you get in like the nostalgia of the one mixed with something new and in this one the main factor of this book is a game of truth and dare so you do the dare or you do the truth and the truth is where they release some some dark deed of your past online in front of everyone so you either do the dare and then you get killed by doing something like jump off a building or something bizarre or you can have your secrets spilled. So you've got to weigh up your options, which one is going to hurt you more. And the siblings from one of us are lying are being targeted and they all must work together 
to find out who the culprit is and put an end to it. And then we've got the third one, Zeta Echo Ridge. This is a small town near the Canadian border. And this is a fun one because it's set at Murderland Halloween Park. Murderland, come on, something bad is just gonna happen there. It's in the name, guys. You know what to expect. So a homecoming queen was murdered at Murderland five years ago. And now the killer is back in town. So you don't really want to be the homecoming queen. So you've got to find out who this killer is and why he's obsessed with the homecoming queens in this small town. Do 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 do. <laughs> and just a note, there is another book coming out called The Cousins that I'm really looking forward to. I think it's coming out relatively soon, maybe in the next couple of months. So if you are a fan of Karen McManus, keep your eyes peeled for when that one comes out. I have, next I have This Lie Will Kill You. And this is recommended for fans of One of Us Is Lying by Karen McManus. So if you enjoyed that, you will likely like this. And this one also has sort of an Agatha Christie vibe with the, not a one room setting, but it's set in an isolated mansion. So one year ago there was a party and someone died. And now the five survivors have been called back to the mansion under the guise of invitations saying that there'll be a £50,000 prize. And they all need this money for different reasons. But when they arrive, things get a bit ghastly, stuff starts happening and it may be too late to leave. Will they survive or will their lies consume them? This is a good one as well because it has some really good settings and descriptions and I don't know about you but when a writer has a really good scene or a good setting I'm immediately gripped and there was this good forest scene in here when she was going through the forest and it was very personified which is like I was like going oh this is so cool it was like the leaves were like hands brushing against her face it was a very vivid in some parts of this. I'd still say I prefer One of Us Is Lying by Karen McManus, but this is a good read if you're feeling particularly nostalgic about that book and you need something in a similar genre with a similar feel. So this is a good read to avoid that reading slump. And then finally, I'm going to wrap up with a series that is more amateur sloth detective. So that is another category within the YA mystery genre. So instead of something happening, this character is specifically looking for a killer or, or looking to solve a crime and that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And she has two books come out now which then this is a sequel <laughs> and it is such a good series. So Pip is a really good strong character. She's doing her A-levels at the same time and she's trying to solve the death of Andy Bell who was murdered by Sal Singh. But Pip does not think that Sal Singh was the murderer and she ends up teaming with Sal's brother to solve this case and she's a very organised character so she writes down everything she sees in logs and you get the logs as well and like phone calls and it's nice just to have books with different layouts within the narrative so it makes it just like pop out more, just makes it a bit different from other novels. So it's a very good read if you want to see this amateur detective. And then the second one I really liked because this one had morally grey characters. What makes a person good or evil? Where do you draw the line? And what makes this different from adult mysteries is that she is a younger detective, she's an amateur, so she's not Sherlock Holmes, she hasn't got like loads of experience under her belt. And with these YA novels, they are not as bleak, as dark as, say, an adult novel. A grimmer murder or descriptions. I don't know about you, but some of the grimmer descriptions in adult novels Oh, it's the oh, so YA mystery is something just sort of in the middle of middle grade and adult. It's not innocent like middle grade novels. Finding the I, I don't even know if middle grade novels have a killer. From the ones that I've read, they're more just finding a thief or something like that. Okay guys, so that is my YA Mysteries video, so we hope that clears up all the different elements and parts that make up YA Mysteries, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below, read, be happy, and stay safe. Thank you again, bye!